I wish I could tell you how I feel. I wish I could take every single moment of this day and tell you how I feel. But I feel that that has been taken away from me this week. And I know that's not true. I know that's not true. But that's how I feel. I thought I could just sit here and tell you a story about today and not have this happen, but apparently this is what's happening and I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna work my way to the day. It's such a beautiful day. Felt like the first day out still sweating, my body is still pushing all of that energy and that sunlight and that heat out. It's not taking it in, it's pushing it out. And that's what I've been doing. I've been pushing out. And I think maybe some people have misunderstood what I'm doing here on this planet. So, I wish that you could feel the way that I feel. I knew I had to walk because the week was very solid and intense. I felt like I lost some ground. And I don't like losing ground anymore. I don't professionally lose ground anymore. That's not what I do. I push out now. I spent years taking in. Oh, fuck. And now I push out. I use my energy in my life to push out. And I do that to assist, to help people on their way. Because I lost sight of my life for almost a decade. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to leave this with you. I wish I could tell you how I feel, but I guess now everyone's right. And if you're not right, you're wrong and you get bonged and you get pushed aside and you get told that you are not correct and no longer serve witness to what is happening here in this world. Well, I'm wrong then. I'm now wrong. I'm on the wrong side. And I know that I'm doing the right thing and it's killing me. I left the house and went for a walk. I needed to walk. It was 90 fucking degrees and so much humidity that I immediately turned into this, this Eastern European wet monster from another planet who apparently is an atmosphere processor that takes all liquids in and never pees and pushes it out through his pores. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's why I'm here. They were terraformers. They came here before the people and set up the atmosphere. And you may think I'm a madman, you may think I'm some sort of bizarre creature, and I am. And I've stood here and I've watched for a very, 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 very long time. And we're doing it wrong. And I include myself in that statement. But I'm trying so hard 
to do it right. So I left the house with a big glass of bottle of water, walked down the desert, which is the piece from 155 in Edgecombe down to the Harlem River Drive, which is a steep grade hill that when I do it in reverse has me yelling and screaming as I make my way up the hill, sweating like a bitch. And I got that joy and I got that posture and I started standing up straight and I found my pace and I drank some water and I made it to Dykeman. That's about two miles. I used to think it was one mile. I was lying to myself, it's two fucking miles. You can't go back, you can't go forward until you get to the end and that's the way it is and it's a nice little trip. You're right along the river, you do the desert. If it's at the end, whatever, I'm over describing. You go under three bridges, you see all these beautiful aqueducts. The cliffs are covered with green trees. There's birds. There's people fucking jet skiing down the Harlem River. And you can see the joy, you can feel the joy. Pass under the 183rd Street Bridge and it's straight shot up to Dykeman where there's a beautiful old rowing house. And they do rowing classes in the summer when things are normal. I took a bench. There's a couple other people taking a bench. Sucked back some water. Got back on my feet. Crossed Dykeman right by Broadway. And Dykeman is a wonderful juice shop run by an amazing Dominican guy. And they throw in whatever you want or you can order off the menu. And I got an aloe and a cucumber and a pineapple and a watermelon and added some spirulina and some mango and some extra vitamin C because I've been a little throaty. Like the voice, not a good time to be throaty. Add some yellow, please, por favor. Had a nice big green ghetto juice container. Hugo taught me that. I'm allowed to say it, so go fuck yourself. It's a ghetto juice container. I get to say that word. I live here. It's 32 ounces of soup or juice in a plastic container with a round lid. Yeah, I know the world's fucked, but the world's fucked. And I got some juice, and I stamp a hole in the top, and we stick in a straw, and I put a couple bucks in the tip jar because it's fresh food in my mouth. When's the last time? Ask yourself. Every day, hopefully. I don't make it every day, but I try. Made my way across Dykeman and got to Tubby Hook, which I still can't even believe there's a place called Tubby Hook. Sounds like a preschool horror movie. I don't know what the fuck that is, Tubby Hook. I gotta look that up. I'm sure it has something to do with tugboats and hooks and uh, I don't know, but it's right in the middle of the vortex of the upper end of Manhattan where the Civil War was, where Washington was looking out across the bridge in Palisades Park. It's down in the distance in the GW Bridge and Fort Triumph Park is there with the cloisters and it's just this epicenter of everything and yet you feel like you're in... I feel like you're in there. Went up to meet my friends Amy and Jim, and we just sat on the grass and did what people who sit on the grass do, drink from plastic cups, listen to music from a little stereo speaker, and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about our families, about where we were from. They're my straight friends who are about to get ditched because they're going to have a kid and move into a house in New Jersey. And I just can't with that shit. Kids, stop having kids. I can't take it. Well, they're moving to New Jersey. We're not sure about the kid. We sat for a long time. It was hot. I was soaking wet. Puddling, as I used to call it when I came out of Body and Soul 20 years ago. I used to call it puddling coined the term myself in front of Pietro and David, who stopped me on the corner of Hubert and Hudson and said, Queen, what are you doing? And I said, I'm puddling. And they said, what's that? And I said, it's when you're so sweaty from dancing that you're standing in a puddle of your own perspiration. I said, Queen, you're coming with us. And we had a night, <laughs> girl. <laughs> We had a night that went into that Monday quite far, New York night, 
took in the sights. Every kind. Took a taxi driver on an emotional roller coaster he probably hasn't forgotten to this day. I sat in the park with these two people for the first time since all of this. Got to sit in free air, talk to people who weren't scared. I can't talk anymore about that. Because when if I say something about that, then I am a bad person. So it was a sunny, 90 degree day at Tubby Hook at La Marina in the park. We checked at the restaurant right by the park. It was a 45 minute wait. We weren't doing that because we're in New York and we don't stand in line for food. So go fuck yourself. Walked over to try in. Got three apps. They were smashingly good. Chicken wings, fried pickles, fucking delicious. A petite portion of nachos. A couple of Moscow mules, a couple double vodka sodas popped at the end of a Sunday afternoon. I think of you. We parted ways. And I, can, as you can tell, got a little emo. And I walked up the Broadway Hill and I thought, could I actually walk 50 blocks home in this condition? Just a couple drinks, but... Haven't been having the drinks lately, have we? I haven't. I don't drink at home alone. I know other people do. No judgment. No judgment. I do other things at home alone that other people would find very judgy. So, you know, cool. Do what you want to do. It's okay. I'm not innocent. You're not innocent. None of us is innocent. And none of us is right. You're not right. You think what you think, and I think what I think. And in the matrix, in the circle of everything, we join in a positive and negative polarity that has gone on since the beginning of time. And if you're willing to cross someone off the, your list because they don't believe what you believe and you've shared friendship and kinship and joy with that person... and you're making a mistake. And all of these little keys and all of these screens and all of these pictures are great and I love them. But it's too easy to cut the rope. We've made it too easy to cut the rope. So I got back here, I was still sopping wet with Eastern European sweat in between two shirts and a big pair of black basketball shorts that I like to wear in the summer. Probably look like the only 52-year-old, 14-year-old out there, and I'm probably dressing under my age, but again, go fuck yourself. I really don't care. I really like the way I look. In fact, I really like the way that I look right now. I probably feel better about the way that I look right now than I ever have in my whole fucking life. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. <sighs> that I let somebody take that from me or somebody took that from me and I'm not going to play the victim anybody who knows me knows I do not play the victim but there's a lot of victim players right now and you're being really loud and you're being really nasty and you're being really stupid so stop it you aren't a victim either we choose we choose how we operate. We choose how we move through this life. We choose how much money we make. We choose how much pride we have. We choose how much we get, how much we lose. We choose it all. And if that's too much, then lose me. But you're making a mistake. 
And I shouldn't even say that much because I'm not allowed to tell you how I feel. Or you can change a little switch and I'm no longer your friend. And that's a mistake. I'm really lucky. I've got some people, I've got some beings who have stood right next to me for a really long time. And they know I'm a fucking freak weirdo. And they let me be that guy. In their homes, at the restaurant, I can shout. I can sing on their answering machines. I know we don't have those anymore, kids. It was really fun. There were cassettes. I could sing. I could leave you a message. There's voicemails. We're missing that. It's stupid. Get back to talking to people. Since Little Pa passed, I've had the most extraordinary power take over my entire being. And I feel even more than I did before, like I am a guide, like I am a beacon, as if I am here to lift and assist people past these colossal, colossal, colossal moments of time. And that's why I'm here, and that's my intention, and that's what I'm doing to serve. And whether I'm serving your particular issue right now makes no difference. Because I've chosen to help. And I've chosen to share and I've chosen to communicate and connect with the people around me in a way that is currently considered untoward. And yet the people I connect with and the friends around me are all experiencing an incredible rapture of life. And I am one of those people. I don't know if anything I've said means anything to you. And I don't know why I would have the nerve or courage or balls or maybe you think I'm some big egomaniacal person to sit here and cry in front of you. But in today, the most simplest of days, a very hot, sweaty, muggy day, I met up with a couple of friends in New York City, got sweaty, had some food, had a couple of cocktails. By the time I came home, I felt like I was more, that I was better, that the world is better. Twenty two years ago, I started writing little letters. That guy, he was an amazing guy. He left California in the middle of his late 20s and moved to New York and started writing little emails to his friends called form letters. And I remember I met one of my best friends, Andy, and he told me once that the day he got one of those form letters was the day that he knew. <laughs> that we were friends. And I don't know why that makes me cry. And I wrote those form letters for a really long time, and I sent them to a group of people all over the world, from Australia to Brighton, England to New Jersey. Slowly they developed into the pieces. I took 10 years off to fucking wade in the gutters of life and fall as far as a person can fall. I was homeless. I lost every single piece of possession that I had except for a big black cat. I had a garbage bag of clothes, and I had one CD book, and some fucking discs left over. And that's what I owned for several years while I was playing in front of you people here in New York. And at home was Lil Pa. We lived in some hideous places. We got bit by bed bugs. 
roaches climbing in the bed and down the walls, and we made it through. Ben had just told me that he was my guide. <sighs> that he came to me in the darkest point of my life to guide me so that I wouldn't kill myself, which had been on my mind for about 30 years since I was a child. <sighs> And we got two good years here at the Chateau. We got in some good belly roasting, smelling that hay butter smell that comes off a cat that's roasted its belly in the sun. You can put your face in there and smell that like it is honeysuckle rose. Musty hay barn heat summer smell. So opulent that they'll never be able to capture that roasted belly. Somehow in the last month I've made it here and somehow Pa is now inside of me and he's here in the chateau and when you come here and visit, which I wish you would, because there's magic here in this house that I have never experienced and I made it. I invite you to come and taste it and eat it and sleep in the guest suite, which is just one room, but it's got a walk-in closet so we can keep a body in there, so it's a suite. I think it's time we get a little bit closer. And I think it's time that we start talking again to each other. And I just wanted you to know that this is how I feel. And the tears aren't sadness. I just don't feel like I'm ever allowed to say how I feel anymore or I might get into trouble. I've always been controversial. There's never been anything normal about Brian Vitlisil. You all know that. It's not going to change now. It's going to get worse. I'm letting you know that now. <laughs> Today was one of those days. Today was one of those days where you understand the pre-quant difference between life and death. Where you understand the sweet, sweet, sweet small spaces between sunlight and rain. Where you get home from an afternoon of just lounging in the park and understand that you're alive and that you have a choice. <sighs> I wish I could tell you how I feel. You know when I write those things? It's the last thing I'm gonna say. And I say at the bottom, I love you all I do. This is how I live my life. I live my life in love. In passion. It's a hard place to live. Because you actually love things. You actually have some passion and compassion. No blame. It's been a lot of crying in this video. I must be pretty pent up. And maybe you are too. But I love you. And I love me. So let's keep going. Sunday night. Twilight Delight. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. It's got to be better than last week. It's got to be. I love you so much. My name is Brian Vitlisell.